Thanks for joining an exciting webinar today. And we have a very distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. Mary Opio. Uh, she's a senior research scientist in, 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 in the field of aquaculture and at Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. She has more than 40 peer reviewed you know, scientific papers, worked on 17 you know, funded projects as a principal investigator. And uh, her work is also looking at different aspects of feature, fisheries and nutrition. And her work um, with SFN is uh, specifically looking at developing a data-driven communication platform for improving um, the farmers, uh, farm fish distribution in Kenya. So we are very excited to hear from, from Mary. And uh, before we start, uh, for the participant, if you have any questions, please do uh, put it in the chat box. And this, the talk would be around 30 minutes. And after that, we will have a Q and A session as well. So, like everybody else, I am also very excited to hear Mary about her research. Please, Mary, floor is um, uh, to you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, uh, Manoj, for the introduction. I will uh, share my screen. Okay, Mary, I think you're good to go. Uh, we can see your screen. Okay. Okay, thank you. So I'm uh, going to talk about a um, uh, project which, which we were undertaking, which was funded by SFN. And uh, the title of my talk is on exploring a data-driven communication platform for improved uh, farmed fish distribution in Kenya. This one is uh, was a collaborative uh, project which we were doing with um, my colleagues at Kemfri, two of my colleagues, and also uh, researchers from uh, Open University, University of Roehampton, and Exteca in the UK. So it was a scooping project. And uh, yeah, now the, the project was uh, about uh, uh, filling the existing gap between supply and demand of uh, farmed fish because there is a real problem when it comes to marketing of uh, farmed fish. Because most of the farmers, they say that they don't know where to sell their fish, while the traders also, they say that they don't know where to get uh, fish. So we saw that it is uh, necessary to have a communication platform that we link the farmers and the buyers or traders so that at least uh, they can uh, change, exchange information and the farmer is able to get where to sell uh, their fish from. So this one, uh, it is important because if this one happens, then the capacity to sell will increase and also it will um, ensure that the post-harvest losses are reduced because most of the farmers, they reduce, uh, they lose a lot of fish uh, from the time it is harvested to the time it is uh, taken to the market because of that uh, lack of communication between the traders or the consumers and the farmers. So um, we, 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 we are piloting this project in Western Kenya to cover uh, Oma Bay County, Kisumu County, Kakamega County, and the Siaya counties. And uh, in the project, what we did was to develop a database, uh, like the uh, potential members of the fish supply chains. And also we did a questionnaire survey to collect information on the need for developing this digital platform. At the same time, we had a stakeholders workshop whereby we discussed uh, the, the need for this uh, platform. So, so far, I will present to you the data which we collected, the results of the questionnaire survey which we did. And uh, the testing of the pilot platform, that one has not been done. And that one is the next step we want to take with uh, the colleagues whom we've been working with. 
And uh, we see that if these uh, projects succeed, then it will uh, help the farmers through contract trading systems, because at least now the, the farmer will know that when, when my fish is ready for harvest, I'm going to sell it in such and such a place. And also it will help in uh, central aggregation of data in the cloud. And that, that one will leverage on systems which already we have in place called the electronic catch assessment survey platform, which is used for monitoring the catches of fish in Lake Victoria. So right now it is specifically for uh, capture fish, but there is a, a part which is supposed to be cultured fish. Although that one has not been covered in this platform, and we hope that we can, if we can get out to do the, the work that we are proposing to do on creating the platform, then it can be incorporated in the ecosystem. Uh, for the, if this uh, uh, activity succeeds, then we expect that there will be minimal wastage and even post harvest losses at all stages of the supply chains and then the capacity building. Uh, for the farmers, because we've also realized that uh, they don't know they, they don't know how to handle fish, and also the, the access of the fish will be improved because now anybody can access the farmed fish from just a touch of the button. They can get the fish to be delivered to them, and this one will help us also to get data from the farmers like the aquaculture data, the production, how much are they producing, how much is on sale, and if there is a plus, then it can be sold elsewhere. elsewhere. And also, uh, because like women have got a difficulty in accessing fish, so it will really in, uh, promote gender equity and the women empowerment, because uh, we find that uh, women are the ones who are involved at the tail end of the value chain where it is now fish marketing. And it will also help with the decision for policymakers if uh, there is data available in the system. Yeah, now um, I'll give uh, some of the results that we got from the survey. Now we did a survey in the counties which are to be covered by this project. And uh, we surveyed 118 respondents. That one is both farmers and uh, traders. And we used open and closed ended questionnaires. And from the results we got from the, from the survey was that we were asking the farmers, where do they get the fish? The, the traders, I mean, where do they get the fish that they're selling from? So uh, a larger majority, 74%, uh, was getting fish directly from the farmers, be it from the pond farmers or the cage farmers, while 19% was getting fish from another trader, like there is somebody who is selling fish in wholesale. So they would go and buy there, then they come and sell. Then we also have fish aggregators. So fish aggregators are people who are selling fish in bulk. They buy from various traders or not traders, but various producers. Then they put the fish in one place because they have the storage capacity, they have electricity, they have uh, deep freezers. So they put the fish in one place, then now traders or even individual consumers can access this fish. So only 7% were buying from the aggregators. The run is the, the trader. So it means that most people who are buying from the aggregators were individual consumers and not really traders. And uh, the challenges which uh, uh, they were facing in the supply chain. Um, so we can see that most of, uh, like for the farmers, the high cost of production was a challenge. Although even the traders were saying that farmed fish is expensive because of the high cost of production. And they were saying that there is a, a low market. So it is expensive to produce, but when you come to sell it, the market price is low compared to the cultured, uh, to the captured fish, the fish which is from the wild. Then uh, they have uh, poor fish preservation techniques because like farmers, most of them, they don't have even a deep freezers. And the smallholder traders, most of them, they don't have even deep, deep freezers. And some markets did not even have electricity. So it is very difficult for them to keep the to keep the fresh fish. And uh, some would opt to like uh, uh, selling the fish after drying them 
or sometimes after the second day, then they opt to deep fry the fish. And then there is uh, the 29 percent were saying that there is a gap between supply and demand of the fish suppliers and the buyers. And 16% uh, were saying that they don't have information on where to sell the fish. While 11% uh, uh, were saying that buyers lack information on the safety and traceability, the ones who have got uh, interest in the safety of the fish. On the supply side, uh, with them, it is the production, which is very high, the cost of production. And then they will delay, like uh, if fish is ready for harvest, like uh, let's say in January, you find that most of them cannot get bulk market for the fish. So they will delay to harvest the fish for sale or they will be harvesting the fish in very small quantities. So it means that they lose because as they continue keeping the fish, it means they continue feeding the fish. So that one brings losses to farmers. And uh, the farmers, they were also complaining of poor quality fingerlings leading to poor growth of the fish and also low level of feed availability that the feed which is locally available is of low quality and the high quality feed is very expensive and you find that it is, it is like in one geographical place which is very difficult for them to access. And by the time it reaches them, then it is very expensive. And also the, the consumers and the farmers, so the consumers, there is a certain size of fish that they prefer, which the farmer do not know. So you'll find a farmer growing fish up to 500 grams, while the consumer, they only require like 250 grams or 300 gram uh, averages individual size. And also there is a lack of consistency on the harvest. Like uh, they will harvest fish today and tomorrow there is no fish. Like somebody, if it is an individual farmer and like they have a contract with the restaurant to be supplying fish, then you'll find that one week they are able to supply fish to that place. Then the second week they are not able or even the second month. So you find that that market get lost. So if at all they are even together in groups or cooperatives, then it can be easier or if they have central storage facilities whereby they can be selling this fish before marketing. So for uh, demand issues, um, there is uh, unreliable customers, like somebody will promise that they are going to buy the fish, but they end up not uh, buying the fish from the farmers. And then there is the competi competition risk from the wild fish, because uh, there is a section of Kenyans who are saying that uh, cultured fish is not as sweet as uh, wild fish. And therefore some people will prefer the wild fish. But the good thing is that the wild fish cannot satisfy the demand for fish. So even in the cultured fish, they will still get market. Then the price fluctuations, like there are some seasons whereby you find that there is a lot of competition from the wild fish, or sometimes there are so many fish, so many people who are bringing uh, imported fish in their country. And that one really brings about uh, like low prices of the fish. So like for cages, the, the fish which are farmed in the cages are more expensive than the fish farmed from the ponds. And that one is majorly because of the cost of production, because you know, like they have to use fuel to go to the lake and uh, come back. Then reason for post-harvest losses. So majority of the farmers, they, they lose their fish because of lack of customers. And this one is because of that gap in communication. And also they lack cold chain facilities, the storage facilities. So it means that they will either um, sell the fish at a throwaway price, or they will uh, have to do some other things bef before selling the fish, like maybe deep frying, which is an additional cost, or sometimes the fish just get destroyed and it is thrown away. So the issue of uh, cold, lack of co these cold chain facilities and even poor electricity connections, that one have really led to the uh, post-harvest losses. So the supply between demand and sub, de this balance between demand and supply of the farmed fish, um, we can say that 50% uh, 50, 50 of the respondents were saying that supply of farm fish is less than the demand, like there is very high demand for the farmed fish. And 45% um, were saying that the demand for the farmed fish was uh, low than the supply. So there is a need for um, more fish. 
and only 5% were saying that there is uh, the, the supply and the demand are equal. So the, the modes of uh, communication, which is used in the value chain by the farmers currently, most of them, they just used phone calls, like they will call a customer and ask them whether they need fish, they are soon harvesting. So most people, they use the phone calls. And even traders, most of them, they use the phone calls because they were saying that smartphone will take a lot of their time because like they want to handle both physical customers and the, the customers whom they are calling. So the phone call was um, being used by majority of farmers, more than 55%. WhatsApp messages was only used by around 12%. Text messages through phone by around 10%. Facebook, there were a few people who were using Twitter, Instagram, live YouTube, tele Telegram messaging, and also a shared mobile application. So these ones are the apps whereby you find that there is an app which exists in the market and um, a farmer is able to share through that app that they have harvested fish, the quantities that they have harvested, and they are able to communicate with the client at the other end on how to sell the fish. The problem with the, the existing platforms is that they cannot even negotiate the prices. So it's like if a farmer said it is 300 shillings, that one is it. So they cannot negotiate. Or if the buyer says that they only want to buy the fish at 250, then that one is the, the, the cost that they will use to, to sell the fish. So currently there are some uh, uh, applications which are in the market. Although these applications, uh, some of them, they have been uh, made for certain products and nowadays they are getting their way to fish. And the problem is that they are put in a certain geographical region. So you may find that it is only like a particular farm using it. Like uh, in uh, cultivate is being used by agriculture people. And uh, so some farmers, they use the app, like when they want to access feeds or if they want to access like fertilizer. Although they are saying that because some agricultural produce are being sold through the platform, then they were saying that maybe it can be used to sell fish. Then we have some applications like OLX, which is somebody just post what they are selling and they say that it is available, but it is not real time. And uh, so you have to reach out to the to the to the person to ask them what do you have? Can I see it? So after they post is when you initiate the con conversation to know whether the product which is posted is available. Then Aquarage is a platform which is being used by one of the farmers, and in this platform they have uh, they are selling feeds through the platform, and the farmers whom they are selling feeds to. Those are the farmers who they are also buying fish from. And in the platform, the, if the farmer order food, so it is like contract farming. So if the farmer order food, then later when they harvest, they are able to deduct the cost of the feed, which the farmer had incurred. And then they deduct that one from the sale of the fish, which has been harvested from the farmer. Then Biofish app, it's also an app which was uh, under trial, but uh, so far it has not exceeded, but succeeded by the farmers were saying that they knew about it. And then FMIS is one is the platform which I was saying that is supposed to be incorporated in Chemfree's platform, uh, in the ICAS platform. That one is the ele electronic fish marketing information, information system. So if we have this for the farmed fish, then it can really help in uh, access to market for the farmed fish. Um, so the, the farmers, most of them, they say that they expect that if at all we have a communication platform, then the communication platform should majorly be about uh, pricing of the fish, like uh, they indicate the prices, like the farmer will indicate the price that they are going to send their fish is when the traders can know which one to choose from and also the location and available capacity so that they know like where do they uh, get like if 10 farmers have posted that, that they have fish, 
but uh, one has posted that they have a thousand fish and another one 500, then the trader is able to select which one they can buy from. And also the stock capacity, the delivery time that it takes to get the fish to the customer, the market demand, and also the distribution network. Like if at all it is the, it is a, a middleman or it is the producer or it is aggregator. So if that one is also in the system, then it can really help the, the traders and even the farmers to exchange ideas and information. Then um, in summary, I can say that uh, this communication platform is something which is really required for the cultured fish marketing in Kenya, because from the response we received from the farmers and even traders, they are really uh, willing to have this communication platform in place. And uh, they would prefer if we could have like a platform which uses both USSD and maybe smartphone applications, because uh, in with the USSD, even if they don't have a smartphone, they can send a code and they are able to receive information like if it is a thousand fish, where can they get it from? Or if it is 10 kilos of fish, where can they get it from? Then, uh, for farmers, with them, they really prefer like an application whereby they can capture pictures and they send them to the traders. Like if they say that I'm harvesting fish of the size of uh, 200 to 300 grams, then they are able to take the picture of the fish in a wing balance so that the trader knows that whatever they are engaging in, it is uh, true. So we, we are planning that uh, if we get further funding, then we will start uh, piloting these uh, uh, platforms with the aggregators in the selected counties so that at least we have a starting point to see how it works before it is uh, rolled out to other parts of the country. Uh, so uh, yeah, this, this one is just a list of uh, our project team whom we were working with in this and uh, thank you so much and also for this project we have uh, we are currently working on another proposal which we are uh, we, we are intending to submit to african knowledge transfer partnerships and uh, under uk research and innovation and uh, also there is another proposal which we submitted to uh, eu horizon for possible funding to enable us continue with this work. Uh, thank you so much. This is very, very, you know, uh, very interesting, Mary. Uh, I learned quite a lot and from the field. Thank you very much for doing amazing work. And if anyone have any questions before, you know, um, I say uh, there is a question on the on the chart uh, from Sonal first, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, would you mind me asking that? Thank you, Mary, um, okay. uh, for for the wonderful presentation. Um, uh, you, even I learned quite a lot uh, in this presentation, so, so very well done. Um, I have actually several questions, but I'll just keep it to uh, the the talk to at the moment. And if there is a time, then I I would. Uh, want to go back. Uh, so you presented there are six or seven existing apps, right? Um, already, uh, like Cultivate and other um, uh, sort of app. Um, uh, so in terms of the things that you are proposing uh, a future uh, possible app, how would that be uh, different to already existing one? Because you also told that, you know, if farmers are able to use these apps, then uh, the demand and the supply uh, would be uh, would be maybe much better matched. Yeah. So so, so that is my uh, first uh, question um, of like, you know, have you looked into making a kind of mock-up? I'm not asking you to like, you know, prepare the entire app, but um, any sort of mock-up that would be more user-friendly for farmers that would uh, help them in, in solving some of the challenges that you have listed out. Um, is, is there any plans for uh, like, you know, preparing a mock-up of how a future app might look like and how that would be different from the existing one? 
Um, so the, the first question on the existing apps. So most of these existing apps, they are uh, targeting like just an individual farmer, like you find uh, a farmer has grown an app which is using by himself. So, you know, in uh, such cases, it is very difficult for other farmers to do that. And it is, it is like it's targeting a certain uh, kind of a buyer only. So you'll find that maybe it is just uh, per region or it is per location or it is uh, very few people whom they can target. And some of them are being used to market agricultural produce and even agricultural input. So, you know, we don't really have a fish specific app apart from AquaReach, which I can say is a fish specific, but with AquaReach now it has the feeds and it has the, the fish. And with them, because it is something which is private, it is like a personal for a certain organization, they want to use it to sell their feeds. And after selling their feeds, then they buy the fish from the farmers who, who bought fish through the app, yeah. Then uh, on a, a mock-up on the platform, that one we've not uh, developed the mock-up, but we've discussed like um, with the farmers also, what would they wish to be in the app? Uh, like uh, what I said before, uh, the farmers, they would really wish to have uh, different aspects in the app, like the prices of the fish, the picture of the fish, the quantities of the fish which are available, the capacity, and they, then they know like the, the person who is asking for the fish, where are they? So that at least somebody does not request fish, uh, like somebody in Sagana, in, 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 instead of requesting fish from somebody around Sagana, they request fish for somebody who is 500 kilometers away, because that one there is a real challenge when it comes to delivery. So that like uh, the app now, if you are interacting with the app, you can dial, dial it, you can dial the USS code or in the app, and then you can see the suppliers who are near you. So that at least just like the way the mobile taxi operators uh, works, like when you go, then you see the people who are near you and you are able to hook up with one of them or now to interrogate more and even see in the platform, what type of fish do they have, what species, what is the weight and all that. Yeah, so this one is what we are looking uh, forward to developing. Okay, and, and just a very minor uh, uh, point on that, like, so how, how much uh, time in advance would the farmer know that, you know, how much quantity of fish would they be producing so that they can put that out in, in, in the app or in the, in the platform um, for any sort of auctions or things like that? Yeah, when uh, the fish reaches uh, four months, then the farmers are sure of when it's going to be ready and even the survival, because at four months now, the survival is uh, very stable. And they, after doing their sam sampling, they are able to predict, like um, my fish will be 500 grams at this, uh, at, at this time. So with that, then they can say that uh, I will be having like, um, one ton of fish ready in two months. In fact, most of them like in the WhatsApp group, they are posting like in two months, I'm going to have like one ton of fish ready. Is there anybody who can buy it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, if I may request Mohammed, because your hand is raised uh, fast. So if you could. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And um, thanks, Mary. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is interesting and very important. I always look at this as like uh, decision supporting the tools. But here we are talking about supply demand. And I, I don't see all stakeholders included because I see producers, traders, retailers, and consumers equally like in terms of supply and demand. So it's not only the farmers to present how much fish they have and which price, but also traders can uh, express their demand and mm -hmm. and and enable customers as well to access markets and to see where they can get the fish, how much they can get the fish, quality of fish. So I think so, so many things need to be in this app and it should be available, accessible to these three key stakeholders along with the farm it uh, fish uh, chain, if you call it. Also, uh, I, I, I don't know. So if, if you are 
enabling farmers is not only for their outputs, but also you need to support their inputs as well. So if they can have access to the markets for inputs, like the fries, the seeds, the feed, and other um, and and other uh, inputs they need for farming. Also, uh, I see the point, and I can understand it because we have the situation in Egypt of the consumers' preferences and the misunderstanding between the wild fish and farmed fish. And farmed fish is fed on this, and the quality of wild might be better than uh, the farmed. However, we did some analysis, and the heavy metals and pesticides was higher, were higher in wild catch compared with the farmed fish. Uh, uh, so I, I see this app also a, a, a good platform for farmers to, uh, you know, like more knowledge about how they produce the fish. So they give the consumers more confidence to use their local produce, com compared with wild uh, fish and compared with the uh, imported ones. I, I, I think this is too much, I know, but I, I'm not sure. You know, it's a bit of optimization. What is your target uh, users of this app and how much this app can present? And also about sustainability, is this will be like um, a free app on the way or you need support or advertisements or else also the farmers associations or consumers, uh, retailers associations, and consumers association, do they have a role in this? And who is controlling the data, type of data, quality of data? Who sets the prices for all inputs, outputs? I'll stop here, I, I, I'm sorry, it's a bit too much. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for that question. Can I answer, Manoj? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we, we are uh, looking at the entire value chain, like uh, for the farmed fish value chain, like we, we, for the farmed fish uh, distribution channel, we have the one which is direct from uh, the producer, which is the farmer to the consumer. Then we have uh, the, the farmer, then to the trader, then to the consumer, then we have the farmer to a trader who is a wholesaler, retailer, then to the consumer. So all that, we, we hope that uh, all of these can be integrated uh, in the platform so that we have uh, the entire distribution uh, channel. Then uh, on uh, marketing of inputs, that one is also something that uh, we had talked about. It's only that we, we just wanted something to start from, then maybe later it can be improved to include like even the entire aqua, aqua, aquaculture value chain from input suppliers to selling of the fish and also even services like uh, extension services providers, uh, research information. So, so that, but that one is now after we've done like a pilot or we've started uh, producing this platform, then now we can link it to other platforms. So we make it to be wider. And, uh, and another thing was on the, who are the, our target users of this uh, platform? Now our target users are uh, like the entire distribution channel. So be it the consumer, the farmer, and uh, also the, the trader. Yeah, we expect uh, all of them to be the users of the platform. And uh, on uh, this other side of, uh, of the de demand of uh, farmed fish against the wild fish. It happens in Kenya that people, they just say that the wild fish is more sweeter, but we had uh, done some consumer surveys. And when we did that, the consumer were not able to separate between the cultured fish and the wild fish. They were not able to differentiate the two. And another thing which is um, a real advantage to the farmed fish is that like the fish in the lakes, they are really going down. The levels are really going down. And most of the time, like um, the cage farmers were in the Victoria, you find that some of these are fishermen who turned into cage farming because they could no longer get fish when they go to do fishing in the lake. So 
we, we are also um, planning to work with the different um, farmer groups because uh, in every county, we have cluster groups or farm association. And uh, already we, we were communicating with the fish marketing authority so that these farmers, they can be put into groups or association to enable them access services or even for them to start like purchasing storage facilities so that at least the fish, if they cannot sell as an individual, then they can be putting them together, like aggregating them in uh, one particular place so that it is easier for the consumer to get them. Then whether the platform will be free of charge or not. So if, because we are planning to incorporate this in a chem-free ecosystem, and like what we had before for the capture fisheries, which was called FMIS, it was not free of charge because uh, if you send, like uh, you are making an inquiry, then the SMS alert, the SMS alert is charged. So we came free and collaborated with the communication service providers that were on Safari Command uh, Airtel. And now these, these charges, it was being uh, shared between Kenfri and the communication service providers so that at least there is money being used to maintain the system. At the same time, there is money or some money for the communication service providers. So we hope that even uh, if we, we produce this platform, then it will take uh, that, uh, that road for it to be sustainable. Because if you just say it is free, it is, uh, it is not possible for us to maintain it, even as government, because the funding levels are going lower and lower every day. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mary, for uh, answering a long question. <laughs> That's very nice. Uh, I think we have a question from uh, Ying Fan. Uh, would you like to say it's in the chat as well, but it might be much more interesting. Yeah. yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I joined late. Uh, I'm assistant professor in University of Birmingham. So I have worked uh, with partners in Kenya where we looked at mainly the demand of cold chain for food. So which include fishing and also uh, vegetables and uh, um, horticulture. Uh, so I just wonder, um, because uh, for, for my work with them, uh, a major part is to assess the needs of the communities about how much cooling and cold chain demand is required. So apparently you said that is a, a, a problem, a lack of cold chain, but the, the app uh, could help balancing supply and demand. Uh, so maybe the fresh fish produce, they could directly go through the um, the fishing community to the consumers. So that might uh, reduce the demand of cold chain. I just thought, um, do you have any thoughts uh, on in this area? Yeah, so the, the, the fresh fish, which is coming like from the source to the consumer direct, those are very small quantities. So you'll find that somebody just want to buy like two kgs of fish, three kgs of fish. So that one, they normally just buy directly but uh, when there is um, a demand for large quantities like the, for example i've told you about the aggregators whom we have so these ones they have like these blast freezers because they they collect the fish in these um, freezer vessels uh, the refrigerated trucks so they carry like maybe four tons of fish or five tons or even 10 tons of fish. And then this fish is still being going to be kept in uh, cooler boxes or uh, with ice. So there is still uh, quite a need for cold storage facilities for fish in Kenya. Because in most of the beaches whereby like for the cage farm fish, when the fish is landed, you find that there is no cold storage at all. And yet fish is a highly perishable product. And if there is a cold storage, I think the, the farmers will even get better prices. For example, two weeks ago, there is a, a fish farmer who wanted to harvest his fish because the fish, they had reached market size, but they had started dying because of lack of oxygen. So if at all they had like deep freezers at the beach, then you could just put this fish in the, in the deep freezer then look for market as the fish in the freezer. So he had to sell the fish at a, a very throwaway price because he could not access storage. Yeah, that one is a challenge. Great, thank you. Yeah.
Thanks a lot. Um, there's a question from Mujoba. Would you like to? Yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, she has some chopper. I'm in the same uh, group with Dr. Ophir on the digital platforms. But uh, I think my question has been answered as she was answering um, the other questions. However, I, I, um, because I just wanted to learn more, I guess um, the project or the proposed um, platform has a goal. So for me, if I was looking at it um, in terms of this market connectivity, my, my question was framed that way because I would like to think that from the problems that you found out from the research, one would want to expand the range of markets. So therefore, that's why I was asking about, uh, it, it seems as if there, there was a concentration on, or a focus you know, on the traders, the aggregators, wherein if this platform, yes, the aggregators, the, 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 the traders could be accessed, was it also you know, freely expanding the range of markets that the small holder, you know, farmers or fish farmers, sorry, uh, could uh, reach. So uh, in a way you answered me, but that's where I, I, I wanted to focus it on um, in terms of that question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I think even the negotiation for prices, that one is very important. Like what Mahmoud had mentioned that even the buyer is supposed to negotiate. And I was talking with uh, some people yesterday in a different fora, and we were saying that uh, even if at all the platform is uh, developed, then uh, also we should think about other ways of marketing like uh, auction, fish auction like what is uh, happening in Nigeria, so that uh, at least uh, the farmers are able to get uh, to, to, to get a market when they, are, uh, when they have uh, harvested the fish. So that one is uh, a point taken, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Can I have a follow-up? Yes, go, go for it, Sana. Um, yeah, hi, Mary. Thank you. So, uh, so basically, you, you have correctly, uh, like, you know, and very nicely highlighted all the challenges faced by, uh, let's say, farmers and um, a different sort of supply chain actors, including the consumers. So you would have an understanding of what are the different sort of data types. And you have mentioned that, like, you know, farmers would need to see this and this and this and this. Um, and you may or may not have the information of what would the consumers or, 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 the, or the person with whom you are connecting the farmers would need the information. So is there any plan of developing any sort of protocol of what sort of data types should be actually standardized and collected for developing such platforms? So, for example, the intention is to connect farmers to the market. So if the intention is to connect farmers to the market, what sort of standards related to the product, related to the process, related to the country um, uh, that, that we should be focusing on or related to like, you know, the actors um, that we should be focusing on. I think if if we have that, then that would, uh, and Muchopa is here also, uh, she is also involved in an expert working group in, in data uh, platforms uh, for small scale holders. Um, so I think it would be a very useful and very helpful outcomes for not just Kenya, but also other countries. So, so it could be product specific. It might not be product specific. Um, yeah. So any, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, that one is a very good idea because, you know, like, um, like uh, farmers nowadays, like most of them, they will tell you that they would wish to know how their fish was grown or is it important fish that is being uh, that is being sold or is it the fish which was uh, harvested so like uh, what the farmers were suggesting that they really want to prove that this fish is in their farm and they are harvesting them so that's why with them they are saying that they would wish to have like an interactive forum 
whereby they can be posting like pictures on different, maybe different stages or maybe the different uh, fish that they are harvesting while they, it is like real time while they are on the ground doing the actual harvest so that the, the consumer can see that the fish I'm supposed to buy was like ABCD. So it is a very good idea to have the protocol of the data which is supposed to be captured so that at least even if it is targeting a certain uh, group of people, then it is done in a way that they get the satisfaction that the fish that they are going to buy is good. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. this is where this is where probably Jens, with whom you you have already maybe collaborated or or thinking to collaborate, uh, would be very useful because we need to see the STFC um, element in that before mm. even we have the platforms, we have to have an understanding of. Uh, um, the way the data collection should be um, like, you know, happening for the other data analyst or the AI um, mm. uh, people to actually make use of those data. Otherwise mm. they would be just ending up cleaning those data, understanding uh, the gaps and uh, like, you know, filling up those things. So where even the algorithm might not work that much. So, you know, the basics on, on data analysis and the data analytics uh, if if we could resolve that, um, that would be an excellent starting point uh, for for such platform to actually work for farmers mm -hmm. um, and for consumers. And okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? We have a few minutes oh, left. Mine is not a question. Sorry, it's maybe just to add more uh, in terms of a, a, a sure, comment sure. and, and sure. what prof. Uh, so now I'm saying even and Dr. Opio. So really um, looking at perhaps because you have an opportunity, how would you measure the impact of the market connectivity? In other words, also, would there be some methods of managing the statistics on that platform? Because uh, maybe you don't want it to just be an extractive process. Uh, it should be cyclical somewhat with those feedback loops. I, I think you were mentioning there that even the, the, the farmers would then post, this is what they could. So once looking at all that, it might then feed into it. So is, is, it a, is there a way that it will not just be extractive? And if then the, everyone has a, a buy-in, it's us, it's ours you know, then they, they use it in that manner. So uh, that is the comment since you are developing it to think about things. Thank you. If I may, um, one small question, yeah. Uh, how do you see the adaptability by the farmers? How, how do you see the use of this technology? by farmers like that is one is it easier for them to use this or it difficult to insert data uh, following the consistency or you know continuity and sustainability of using this uh, this piece of you know technology how do you what is your experience what did you see in the field yeah, what I saw in the field was that the farmers were really eager to have such a platform uh, because they, they, they say that it is a real challenge for them. So if they can have such a platform, uh, they are ready to use it. And like, um, like the farmers, most of them, most of the farmers had smartphone, smartphones because they realize that some of the things that they are purchasing is like they have to use a smartphone to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the traders is where the problem was because the traders, most of them, they are having, uh, they are not having smartphones, but they have phones which can receive SMS and uh, yeah. which can make calls. So that's why we are saying that if, if at all we have both, like if it is a platform having uh, both... Uh, having uh, both um, uh, USSD code, at the same time it is an interactive uh, application, then it can serve all the, all the stakeholders. Yeah, all the stakeholders who are involved. Because- No, that really, is very true, yeah. No, that is yeah, very they're... true. But I could like to share a, like, you know, a piece of uh, interesting information from a neighboring country, Uganda, that's where, we thought 
if we develop a app for the cow farmers, the dairy farmers, and we develop an app called Cowletics, where they can put all the information around cows and connect to the market. And in last three years, we have seven people use it. You know, we thought, you know, there is a need, there is a, you know, there is a challenge and we really can make a difference and they can get the information. It is so difficult. Technology was not the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how you make the farmer use it on a consistent basis, because we are, data is all about the, the critical mass, right? How many people use it? That is, mm -hmm. that is going to determine a lot of things. And also mm -hmm. how regularly, how religiously you will do all these things. And we have found it very difficult yeah, to, to really, you know, make it work uh, in a very sustainable way. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to hear, but cow, I understand it has a lot of processes. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, over the period of time, when you feed, how you feed, you name it. But with fish, I could imagine it could be a little bit easier because you don't have a lot of processes for the farmers. Mm -hmm. you, you, you fish, and you pack and you bring it to the market, you sell things like that, right? Yeah. How, what is your view on this? So like um, there is um, an uh, experience I had, like uh, when we were collecting the data and we were going to a place where they are doing cage farmers, cage farming. And there we went very early in the morning at around uh, seven o'clock we were there. And uh, at that time, there were women there who had come to buy fish. And also there were some trucks which were there waiting for fish to be landed. We stayed there until uh, 2 p.m. So that one is around seven hours, waiting for fish to come from the lake so that it is uh, landed offshore. So you know, when we were just uh, talking with these traders, they were telling us that, you know, like if at all that app could have been there, then maybe I could have been in my place. I could be at home doing my other farm work while waiting for my fish to be delivered by a rider, by a motorbike rider, instead of me going to, to stay at the beach to wait for this fish to come from the lake, then I have to sort it to, to say that this is the size that I, I want. So, you know, there was that uh, interaction we had and that one was really promising, indicating that this one is something that they're really looking into. And when it comes to adoption of technology, I know there are challenges with that because sometimes uh, people normally resist change, but uh, I think it depends with the, the approach. Like for example, uh, when, um, when FMIS was being rolled out, then uh, now there was just an advert or some announcement that if, uh, if, 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 if at all, like the traders were to, to sell the, their fish through that uh, FMIS, like that they will get a discount of uh, even 10 shillings. So, you know, many people, because 10 shillings is a lot of money, like 10 shillings per kilo or five shillings per kilo, it is a lot of money when you are buying in bulk or when you want to buy something. So, you know, people would now say that they prefer using the app or the platform than going there physically because now they will be getting a discount while they're using it. So those promotions have to be done as stakeholder engagement will have to be done, advertisements and all that. I think those are everything yeah. which will have yeah. to be done to ensure that uh, it is uh, continuous. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, this is absolutely very promising. Very, it, it will be, have a huge impact, significant impact for the community. Thanks a lot for doing all the amazing work. And I think we are one minute away. Any final things, Sonal? Um, no, I think Mahmood has his hand up. Uh, Mahmood, if you could just uh, wrap it up in like 30 seconds, that would be helpful. Yeah, just to put it, it's related to the challenge that Manu raised. Uh, you, as a project, you may not be able to reach all stakeholders, all farmers, all traders. So as a starting point for the dissemination, let's say, could be the like the farmers association, non-governmental uh, organization within the value chain. That's all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Thank you. That's a very, very important point. So, yeah, farming communities, farming organizations, um, uh, and NGOs, I think connecting them uh, would be would be definitely imperative. Uh, we are doing something similar in India as well, and I think it works. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, we are looking forward to hearing more from you, Mary, and I, I'm especially looking forward to that data type protocol. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining and contributing. We will keep the conversations going on and uh, looking forward to seeing most of you in, in our conference. Thank you.